game class. Today, we're going to discuss leak detection and vacuum systems and flanges and leakages and things. Say, Professor, why don't we show our audience some examples of real leaks? Certainly, Dr. Pascal. Lights and action! Vacuum technology is an integral part of science and industry. Vacuum and pressurized systems are used in semiconductor manufacturing and processing, in thin film growth and surface coatings such as is done in the manufacture of magnetic data storage media, in the production of lasers and other optical devices for telecommunications. and in sophisticated materials analysis instrumentation, just to name a few. High quality vacuum is essential. The quality of the materials and films being deposited or processed is directly related to the cleanliness and stability of the vacuum conditions inside the system. External gases or contaminants within a vacuum system can lead to poor adhesion and bonding of materials and devices being produced. This is an important and costly issue in many high-tech industries. That is why accurate and expedient leak detection is so critical. American Vacuum Society presents Introduction to Leak Detection. In this video, we will explore the important process of vacuum leak detection. We will cover how you can tell if a leak exists. We will discuss the different type of leaks that may occur. We will show you how to find the leak. And finally, we will discuss alternatives for repairing the leak. Does a leak exist? This system was designed to have an ultimate operating pressure of 10 to the minus 9 torr. However, you can see that the ion gauge controller shows that the lowest pressure, which is currently obtainable, is only 10 to the minus 7 torr. Thus, the system is not able to attain the ultimate pressure it was designed to achieve. This high pressure is our first indication of a possible leak. In addition, the residual gas analyzer reveals that the system shows unusually high concentrations of molecular oxygen and molecular nitrogen, the major gas species in the atmosphere. This indicates that atmosphere may be leaking into the system. It appears that we have a vacuum leak. Measuring the pump down time of the system will supply more evidence of a possible leak. This, as well as an analysis of the residual gases present in the system, can not only indicate whether a leak is present, they can also help us determine what type of leak we have. A real leak, an internal leak, or a leak due to excessive outgassing. During the evacuation of the vacuum chamber or a pump down, the pressure will drop to a certain point in a given amount of time. Remember, if a real leak exists, outside air continuously enters the vacuum chamber through an opening. During a pump down, the pressure will not fall as fast or to the same ultimate pressure as when the chamber is leak tight. Specifically, using a standard calibrated leak, a leak rate in units of tor liters per second is determined for the spectrometer. This calibration allows determination of the minimum detectable leak. A modified RGA optimized for detection of only helium is called a helium mass spectrometer leak detector. This is the most sensitive instrument available for general leak detection and can detect leak rates as low as 10 to the minus 14 torr liters per second. Mm -hmm. 